Welcome to Fading Memories, a podcast with advice, wisdom, and hope from caregivers who have lived the experience and survived to tell the tale. Think of us as your caregiver best friend. Welcome back, listeners, and thank you for choosing us once again. Help me welcome back Kim and Mike Barnes of parent, ParentingAgingParents.com. It is .com, isn't it? Yes. That's the oh, website. Good. Not, not, not .org. Wonderful. <laughs> Thanks for joining us again today, guys. We're glad to be here. I can see you again. So we're talking about uh, financial scams and how to teach your aging parents technology. <laughs> Sounds like employ the 12 year old grandchild and and <laughs> go have a brownie. Exactly. Or something. exactly. We, we, we've done some of those. Yeah, we we've done some have. of that to, to some degree for sure. Yeah. Well, if you don't have a 12, 12 year old uh, grandchild, then I guess some of us are going to have to learn. So mm-hmm. right. why don't we start with what type of scams are the most common? Like, what should we be looking out for? Because I've read and heard all kinds of different ones, but mm-hmm. there's probably more out there that I'm aware of, well, unfortunately. You know, the simple one that everyone knows about and that most of us have learned about, but sometimes our aging parents haven't, is the don't click on things because you just get this random email and it says, your account's been closed. Uh, you owe this much money. Mm-hmm. Click click here. Or you just bought this iPhone and they're like, well, I didn't buy anything off Amazon. Yeah. And it, they're so official looking. I kind of compare it to when, when you have kids and one of the first things you teach them when they start walking is before you cross the street, look both ways. Well, the first thing that we tried to teach our parents, my dad, her mom mainly was don't click on anything on any links. Let us know about it. Right. And and the funny thing is to, to this day, I'll tell my dad, dad, I'm sending you a link. It's okay to click on this one. <laughs> Cause every once in a while I'll send him something I actually need him to click on. But otherwise mm-hmm. I get, I get emails every week from my dad. She gets emails almost every day from her mom about some type of scam mm-hmm. where someone has sent them something and it's like, they just want to make sure. Uh, in some ways, we're we're nice. Sometimes Kim isn't as nice to her mom, but sometimes just says, "You know, mom, did you look at the email address? Did like, you yeah, it? really from? Because we can make it say it's from Santa Claus if we want to. Yeah. But you, there are ways now that they're getting fancier about being able to cloak things. But for the most part, you're going to see that it's seven seven eight john at gmail.com and that's not at&t you know that's yeah. that's not a legitimate email address for at&t so if if it looks like it's official but but i think the thing we also have to remember is that they are getting so good at making things look so official i get text messages all the time now because now they come in text message form as well Mm -hmm. and as well as emails and you have to you have to look twice and so you can imagine for our parents who didn't grow up with a lot of this technology of course we didn't either but we we (laughs) were younger when we had to start using it but for them they just want to believe the benefit you know they want to give people the benefit of the doubt and they think oh if somebody's emailing me it must be something important yet now when i look at my mom's spam folder every day. Oh my gosh. It is. There's probably 40 that are all, Oh, you've purchased this thing on Amazon or, Oh, you're, we're going to, your, your accounts being closed or the things you talked about. And so they look very legitimate. So it's really helping them to understand, just don't click on anything. Don't give out personal information, but those are the simple ones. Apparently somewhere, someone has email addresses that uh, the title is suckers. (laughs) There's a long list. Oh, I'm on that list. Yeah. I think my (laughs) mother-in-law must be on there too, because she gets so many. It's just, it's very Mm -hmm. sad, but there are other more intricate, elaborate and bigger scams Mm -hmm. that we really Mm -hmm. have to protect against. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, uh, my mother-in-law has been a victim. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The, the one that caught, got her was that somebody calling one of the ones, one of the ones, I guess it started really. I mean, really where it started was somebody calling and saying, Oh, we can help you monitor your computer and make sure there are no viruses and all of that kind of stuff where it sounds like it's tech support. And interestingly, I think at the beginning, it kind of was, and then it turned into whether it was some people that went rogue, or maybe it was just really a long play where that Hmm. was the way they do it. But eventually it got to where they, they got her caught up in in one of the gift card schemes because they, they had Ooh. access to her computer mm-hmm. because, because they the, were they were doing they were helping her right yeah. so they had they they could get into her computer because that they got access to her bank account so they knew Yikes. both her, her savings and her checking account and she didn't know it 
And what happened is that they 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 approached the the older adult or I mean anybody, but but whoever might be more prone to to agree with a hey, we need your help. We need to get some gift cards, but we're not able to do it. So let's give you the money if you could go get them for us and then give us the codes. What they did in this situation was they transferred money from her savings account to her checking account, which unfortunately she'd given them access to her online banking system. So no, they, so when she not called knowing. the not yeah. knowing. So when she called the bank to say, Hey, I just want to make sure this, you know, that I have money in my checking account. It looked as if she had been given the money, but she didn't go that next step to realize that it was from her check her from her savings account. So it was, it was her own money. So then when she goes to the store, buys all these gift cards, comes back and gives the codes, poof, it's gone. Oh, no. And nothing she can and do nothing about you it. can do about it. Fortunately, in that situation, we were able to, she realized right after it happened and she told me about it because that's one of the challenges I think is that she immediately realized, oh, that was a dumb thing to do. And so if you, which my inclination is, mom, what were you thinking? Just yeah. like you might tell your teenager, mm-hmm. you have to be really careful because if you, they're embarrassed because they realize she realized, oh, that was not, that, that was dumb. Like, I can't believe I fell for that. But if you make them feel worse about it, then they're not going to tell you in future times. So it's trying to figure out, okay, mom, mm, mm, man, I hate that that happened. Yeah. And know that those people are very tricky. They're very sneaky and they're very persuasive. So it's not your fault, but what, what are the things that we can do to prevent that from happening again? Unfortunately, after we had changed bank accounts, we had removed her online access to her banking. So that was one tip. So that even if they could, and, and I had somebody who Got we thought scrubbed her, clean. We, we thought it was scrubbed, but just in case, we didn't want anybody to potentially be able to access it. So we just closed her online banking uh, in her in her username. So that even if someone got in her account, they couldn't get to anything. And a lot of banks will allow it so that I still have access because I'm a signer on her account. I have access to be able to check her balances and things like that. So it's on my computer, but not on hers. And then I don't know. It was a little ways after that. that Again, we got, there's a sucker list somewhere. And they found her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and unfortunately it was uh, some of it kept saying it was the same people that yeah. had done it before. And she was good about, you know, hanging up on them, but you know, eventually they just, they just wear you down, I guess. And so the next thing that happened, I was in the, in the car on the way to an appointment and I get a call from my mom's banker at the branch where she banked calling me to say, Hey, I just want you to know that your mom just called, said she was on her way to pick up money to buy gift cards, buy gift cards again. And I told her to turn around, go home and call you. So thankfully crisis averted because I was now after the first situation on a first name basis with the <laughs> bank, bank, br- the bank branch manager of her bank. I don't know, you know, I don't know that I know mine, uh, but I know hers, <laughs> which again, thankfully Thank for him that he had my cell phone number and could, and could let me know. So that, so we were kind of able to lock down. Fortunately, that has not happened again. And I think part of it is that we have tried to redu- reduce access. So that's good. We've reduced the amount of, so a couple other tips out of that, that we learned is we reduced what is kept in her bank account so mm. that if somebody were to get into it, there's a limp, there is definitely a limit to what they can get. We've also, uh, what else have we done? We closed down that online uh, access for that banking. And, and you know, so that that was just one, but that it, it's just so they just prey on people. And we've heard horror stories, even even far worse financially than than some, than what happened to my mom with some of the people in our group. Yeah, it's just been terrible. Mm. You know, one one man in California, a grandfather of someone uh, was scanned and wrote checks to someone up to one hundred thousand dollars. Oh, yikes. And nothing could be done because he wrote the checks. He fell mm. victim to the fraud and he wrote the checks. And yeah, he, he was getting ready to move to another state to, to be with his, his relatives, to, to be with the kids. And he had no money now. What are these scammers asking for? So they call up and they say, we need these gift cards for what? I mean, if somebody called me up and I, I fell victim to a, an email I guess it was a phishing email. Mm-hmm. Looked mm-hmm. like it was from Wells Fargo. It needed mm-hmm. me to verify. You think my husband was in banking for twenty years? I think I would have known better. This was two thousand ten, so yeah. it was a little, a little ways back. But yeah, I clicked on something and they got into my <clears throat> bank account. They changed the password. Mm-hmm. They did two things, and then they 
they ordered, oh, they changed the password, ordered new checks, and then bought something out of state. That's what flagged the account. So they didn't get any money, but they made my life, you know, it was a business bank account, and the bank wanted to shut yeah. it down. I'm like, no, there's all these automatic payments. It was you can't a just shut oh, it down. Oh, God, yeah. it was awful. Yeah. Yeah. But, well, and, um, and they, and, when, and when they had access to my mom's bank account, they actually created a PayPal account, which she just said, I don't need, she didn't even know what PayPal what's, was. What's PayPal? But they had created it and made a purchase. So some of it is really being, you know, in, in partnership, if you will, with, with the bank and that they were able to help mitigate and help you know, be in contact with PayPal to be able to make sure that they, that they knew that. And then there's like a fraud alert on her account now. And there's just different things like that. But I think that the challenge is they, that they, they're sneaky, right? So they mm-hmm. just ask for what maybe seems like just a little bit of information. And then it just sort of leads to more, but it's, you know, we've, we've heard of, I mean, we've heard of cases where people, a grandmother will get called and say, oh my gosh, your grandson is in jail and he needs bail money. And we, he didn't want us to call anybody, but you, he didn't want us to call his parents, blah, blah, blah. I mean, you make up this whole big elaborate scheme. And w- there've been some that have been as bold as showing up on the doorstep to collect that money. And there was one that we heard of that only because when the, when the scammer describe or said the name of the kid to the grandparent, they said, yeah, that's not what, like, we have a nickname that everybody calls the child, but they called him, the scammer called it by the given name. And so they immediately, that immediately threw up a red flag. So I think that part of it is, is having these conversations with our parents. Like when I get these really legitimate looking ones to say, Hey mom, I've been getting all of these these scams lately. And I just want you, I want to make sure, you know, are you getting them too? You know, if you're not already having access to their, their, their email system, which that's one of the things that I did is I go in and check her email every single day and try to delete as many of those scams before she ever even has to. So that way she doesn't even have to make the decision. Do I, I think this is not real. I'm going to delete it or forward it to me. But if I can go in and, and, you know, just get rid of it, beforehand, that's just one way to kind of well, quell that. But I think helping them know, hey, here are some things that I'm seeing or hearing. Have you heard about things? Or just, again, just sometimes if it's just in the back of their mind that they've heard this story, if something similar like that comes up, it might trigger that memory. Oh, and being careful with giving out your <clears throat> your credit card information over the phone, <clears throat> especially to political campaigns or even nonprofits that may call over and over and over. And that's what happened to Kim's mom, where... Kim just happened to look on her on her credit card statement and saw the same group Groups. had called four weeks in a row getting money from her mom. It's like, uh, okay, like, like that's yeah. just not nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, her, her mom doesn't have a great memory. She didn't remember all this, and luckily it was nothing big. It was you know twenty five dollars or something like that. But still, you know, if she wanted to give a hundred dollars, she would have given it all at once. Mm-hmm. She didn't say, "Yeah, call me back next week and let me give you some more." <laughs> yeah, there's some of it that just yeah, you just think. Uh, these are just not not nice practices, you know, and maybe they're not keeping very good track of things. But it is, it is, you know, mom, don't give your credit card number out over the phone. If somebody wants to send you a solicitation, ask them to mail it to you. Although then, of course, then they have your address. But that's, yeah. I mean, so you just have to kind of decide what is it that they're comfortable with because that generation they're so trusting mm-hmm. they just wouldn't imagine that somebody would call them and try to scam and get in their bank account because. It's just not a nice thing to do, right? And, and so, it may not even be calling because we have one one person in our group who said that that their mom has a little bit of dementia. She's in assisted living, and a younger man kind of befriended her. Well, the younger man took her to the bank, to her bank, and got four hundred dollars out of her account, and which is probably the know, daily limit. Yeah, and and she was there, so so nothing they could do about it. But the 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 child found out about the adult child found out about it and said, "Okay, we're taking everything out of that account. Mom can't have access to that account." But again, part of that has to do with the communication mm-hmm. and the, the relationship that you have with mom and dad, and making sure that they understand that. Look, I'm not trying to take all your money, mom and dad. I just don't don't want somebody else to take all that money that you but, might not necessarily intend to be giving. Exactly. And I think certainly when there is any dementia involved, this, of course, just exacerbates the problem yes. because they either don't remember making the donation or they'll say, no, I didn't do that when they they might have. Mm-hmm. And so that's where it gets really tricky is, you know, really watching for. And, and I think for, for some of it is 
the things that we've tried to do just to sort of protect her. <clears throat> Another little thing we did was re- just reduce the credit limit on her credit card. You know, the longer you've, if you've had a credit card for 20 years, you probably have an $18,000, $20,000 credit limit, which she doesn't need. And so, if somebody, so just in case somebody did get access to her credit card, we reduced it significantly. So there's just a limit to what they could get to. Yeah. So just little things like that can make such a difference in, it gives me a little bit more peace of mind feeling like she can't be taken advantage of too much, too which much. is, but it, it, it is hard. And the, the hard part is, is that the more uh, you, they're, they're very sneaky so that it's not them stealing. They're not breaking into your accounts, if you will, they're, they're building trust so that you give them that information, that they're you're getting the gift cards for them. You're doing those things. You're writing those smaller checks that start adding up to a significant amount. And then law enforcement really can't do anything about it, Yeah, which is but, really hard. But again, think about it as same as your relationship with your child, your relationship with your aging parents is, is so similar because I know when I was a kid, if I ever made a money mistake, even if it was you know, giving a quarter to a friend and didn't mean to, I didn't want to tell my mom and dad. I didn't want to embarrass myself. Like I can't handle my money. And I think our aging parents are the same way. They don't want to admit to a mistake, mm-hmm. whether it's something for $25 or $25,000. Mm-hmm. It's kind of embarrassing to them. So you need to make sure, try as hard as you can to have an open relationship with mom and dad mm-hmm. that you're not, you know, chastising them. I can't believe you did that. Oh my goodness. Are you an idiot? Yeah, you, know, you can't do it like that. It's almost like, you know, I'm here to help. Mm-hmm. How can I help you? You've helped me for so many years. Let me help you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good terminology. And, you know, we all know that our aging parents, they don't they don't want to give up their independence or their control. They certainly don't want to give up their money to their kids. <laughs> Not <Right>. yet. <laughs> right. So if so th- it's understandable that they would be Reluctant to come forward with, uh, I think I might have gotten myself into a little bit of a trouble here, yeah. because that just opens the door in their minds and and probably in reality to you know you guys or me or whomever's listening to basically maybe overreact because it is a big deal. Sure, you know, it's a giant headache. So you might yeah. you might overreact out of love and fear yeah. and. You know, well, strip well, them not, of a lot of their independence. Exactly. Especially, you know, think about us. We compare ourselves in some ways to our peers. Well, you know that they do too. They have they have friends who are, whether they're younger or older, who are already in assisted living or memory care or a nursing home or something where they have no control over mm-hmm. anything. And maybe they have this little fear. Maybe it's in the back of their mind. They're, oh, if, if I tell Kim mm-hmm. that I've gotten scammed again, oh my gosh, you know, she's going to put me in assisted living or she's going to take away all my money or she's not going to let me write checks or, or I'm not going to be able to do this or that. And they lose that independence. And, and that, that's hard on them. It's, it's, I don't think a lot of us realize how hard it is on our parents to lose that independence. When, when my sister and I convinced my, my dad, you know, hey, we were moving my mom into memory care, which was hard enough. But we said, you know, and you don't need that house anymore. You live in independent living. You, you only go there to, to keep it up, so to speak. Mm -hmm. which is hard on you since you're in your 80s. You don't need it anymore. We're not going to live there. So, you know, sell the house so you can use that that Mm -hmm. money to help pay for mom being in memory care. And my dad sold the house and he told me afterwards, he said, I I just just don't like this because I don't own anything anymore. I said, well, dad, you still have money. Mm -hmm. It's just instead of in real estate, Mm -hmm. you know, it's in your bank. He said, Mm -hmm. I know, but I don't own anything anymore. That's just just so weird. And, you know, he'd owned property for, Gosh, I don't know, sixty years, mm-hmm. and, and 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 that's hard. That that we don't realize for people who are born in the the twenties or the thirties or the forties, you know, it's a status symbol. You know, you own property. Mm-hmm. You know, for us these days, it's like you know, people just buy property left and right. It's not a big deal. But but back in the old days, it was such a big deal. And again, it's something about comparing yourself to your peers. Like, yeah, I own property. Do you own property? Yes, I own property. Mm. And, and you're 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 letting go of that and and giving up, so to speak, to where mm. yeah, I guess I'm yeah, I'm just going to be stuck here. I don't own property anymore. It, it's mm. just it's a mental thing. But I think it's just something that we have to understand as the adult children what our parents are going through. That mm. it's just different for them because they're from a different mm. different era. Well, and we really had to appeal to my mom because after these subsequent things happened over a course of 
a year, I guess it was, we felt like, okay, for her protection, we need to take over the finances. And that was, it's been, I get asked about it all the time. Yeah. Uh, but she understands because we're just saying, we we don't want, just like we don't want those people to be able to get into your computer potentially. They shouldn't be able to, but if they can, we don't want them to be able to access anything. I, you know, you don't want to give pe- money to people that you don't intend to. And so she's, we had to sort of appeal to the, hey, we're just going to take care of it. So you don't have to worry about anything. And that's worked mostly okay. Mostly. Uh, but it's, it's just having to try to, uh, knowing their personality and what might be beneficial. You know, this is our time. You don't have to worry about anything. You just go play bridge, you know? Uh, and so, focusing more on that, but, but it's really a lot of it is out of protection because we don't want her to fall victim to this again. It's makes her feel bad. And it's just, it's just terrible. No, definitely. Well, I do have one tip from personal experience on the real estate end. <clears throat> My husband's a real estate broker. We had a house that was too big, too expensive on a golf course that they closed so at the end of 2019, we decided we better get out before the market went went crashing. <laughs> and then this little pandemic thing happened and the market uh-huh. went the other direction. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. We, <laughs> we basically lived for two years as renters. And, oh, man, it just, it made my husband nuts. Because it's just, you know, you and we knew it was, we did that on purpose. So it wasn't, it wasn't a losing of independence, but it was still, it was hard. But when my dad passed away and we put my mom in memory care, because my mom was only 74, um, you know, and, and this is why befriending other experts and professionals in other industries is very beneficial is a CPA, um, you know, friend of ours in Rotary said, why would you sell your mother-in-law's house? He was obviously talking to my husband. Um, you should really consider renting it out. My husband does property management, so duh. Yes, he should have considered renting it out. Because then you keep that asset and you have the, in, you know, as long as the income would help pay, for, you know, the, the balance was right. And it was because the sure. house was paid off. And that's what we did. So in the instance of Mike's dad, you know, you could have rented it out, kept that investment, especially because now, well, now the real estate market's starting to cool down a bit, which is, <laughs> is a good thing, I guess. But you would, you know, he would still own it. And it would always still be his, you know, and he could even maybe be part of the the managing of it. Yeah. yeah. I would yeah. definitely recommend a, a property manager so you didn't have headaches. Yeah. But right. you know, that's something to consider because so many people yes. yeah, yeah. They well, and, they and sell I, mom and dad's house and then mom and dad they or mom or whomever's in memory care, they run out of money right. at the point where they need the most care and now you have no options. Really. Right. So. Right. 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 So I think that's a great point is, you know, some of the interviews that we do on <clears throat> parenting aging parents and, and just in, in the, and learning about so much in the last year is that knowing when is the time I need to get that advice for mm-hmm. our, for our certain search, our situation, because since everybody's situation is a little it's, bit different, it's different, it's figuring out, okay, knowing the, knowing these parameters and this, you know, what we, these expectations, what's the best situation in that case. And that's where it's so tricky because there's not always a one size fits all. No, and so, not. but it's, but it's good to know that there's all these other options, options. and what should we think about yeah. and, and take into consideration. And explore for sure. those options, a- ask an expert, find expert or experts right. that can help you and find out what's good for your situation. And that, yeah. that's, again, one of the hardest things is that my situation is different from Kim's situation, which is different from your situation. And it's all different from family dynamics to the financial situation, to the medical situation, everything in in, in between. Mm-hmm. So just find out what's best for you mm-hmm. and don't compare you as, as much yeah. to, to someone else. Just find out who you should talk to. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. And one of the things in a past episode on, um, it just was out recently called Show, Show Me the Money. It was how to talk to your parents about their finances. <laughs> yeah. One of the tips and we didn't have to use this as much with my parents, but it's been very beneficial for us mm-hmm. is to actually have a personal banker that you know, mm-hmm. like what happened with Kim. The banker uh-huh. called and said, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> red flag here. Yeah, yeah, Since, yeah. Turned your mom around. You know, I have never liked banks. 
<laughs> not since 1987. So I was super thrilled when with my little business, I could just deposit checks with my phone. Uh -huh. That was a very happy day. But, you know, sometimes you just need to go in and, mm -hmm. and let them know, hey, this is the face behind mm -hmm. this account. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, you know, I mean, it's personal, rel yeah. personal relationships always are beneficial. Always. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I let my husband do the bank stuff, but for a while we had this... We had the same personal banker and he also helped with my the trust account for my mom and mm. you know it all worked but it was fine but yeah it's like it's not really something i think even younger folks think about because you know we have 500 things to do going in and you know mm -hmm. sitting down talking to a personal banker you know it's probably not on the top of the list not for today anyway yeah. right but it's right. definitely super beneficial so the one scam that I know of that I don't know how you would help them avoid is people coming to the door, selling them the walk-in tubs or redo, you know, redo the bathroom for safety because, you know, like we need to redo our bathroom. Mm -hmm. and my husband's a foot taller than me. And I am actually surprised that the step into the shower is just high enough to be a tripping hazard and we're we're mm -hmm. fine you know like we mm -hmm. don't have balance issues or any of that and so you know when we redo the bathroom <laughs> we, mm -hmm. we have to consider some of these mm -hmm. um yeah. aging aspects of bathroom safety because mm -hmm. bathrooms are the most mm -hmm. hazardous room in the house well, but how do you prevent the people or how do you deal with the people that are coming to the door and those people are probably worse because they're probably super pushy now we're going to take a quick break for an ad these ads help me continue to bring the show to you for free. When I learned that despite eating as healthy as possible, we can still have undernourished brains, I was frustrated. I also live in a farming community, so I'm aware that our food isn't grown as well as we need. Learning about NeuroReserves, Relevate, and how it's formulated to fix this problem convinced me to give them a try. Now I know many of you are skeptical, as was I. However, I know it's working because of one simple change. My sweet tooth is gone. I didn't expect that, and it's not something other users have commented on, but here's some truth. My brain always wanted something sweet. Now, fruit usually did the trick, but not always. One bad night's sleep would fire up my sugar cravings so much they were almost impossible to ignore. You ever have your brain screaming for a donut? Well, for me, those days are gone. It's been about six months since I started taking the supplement and I have no regrets. I believe in my results so much that I'm passing on my 15% discount to you. Try it for two or three months and see if you have a miraculous sweet tooth cure or maybe just better focus and clarity. It's definitely worth a try. Now back to our conversation. Well, I think it's either just, you know, suggesting that they not answer the door if they don't know somebody's there. I mean, I, I'm really careful about who I open the door for. I mean, uh, uh, just even if, especially if Mike's not here, we had one story of a friend, who, a friend's husband's grandmother who was living by herself and had macular degeneration. Somebody actually knocked on her door asking if they could mow her lawn that, Hey, it looks like you need some yard service, which I'll, and she said, Oh yeah, I do. So they mowed her grass and continued to do so at regular intervals. And when the family went to go visit months later, they opened up her China cabinet, the drawers and all her silver was gone because what had happened. So this is a, a, you know, a little different than just like a door to door salesman type, but this was a service provider that came befriended her and she lived by herself and would invite them in for lemonade. And they just, what they deduct, what the family finally deducted was that she just, she would invite them in and they just kept getting a little bit further inside the house every time. And because of her macular degeneration and the fact that she was older and not doing a lot of entertaining, she wasn't looking in the drawers. So they left just enough in the glass cabinets that she could still see some shadows and didn't realize that they had just cleaned out all of her silver. Mm. And so that's the kind of stuff that you just think, oh my gosh, that's just heartbreaking, heartbreaking. Oh, definitely. My paternal grandmother lived to 103 <clears throat> Wow. She okay. I can't do the math fast enough. <laughs> she died in twenty one. Her husband died in ninety seven. So wow. you can do the math. It's too early on a Monday for me for that. Yeah. But and she also had glaucoma, so she was mostly blind. Mm -hmm. And that was one of her biggest fears. She was oh, 
she was terrible about taking care of the house because she was concerned that she would get ripped off. And that was a 1000% legitimate concern. But of course, her oldest grandson-in-law is a property manager and has lots of trustworthy, you know, contractor, service <laughs> right. provider people. Right. And he kept telling her, just call me and I'll deal with it. That's right. right. Yeah. So, so I think it's finding who are the right people to call mm -hmm. and also just trying to train them just like, which sounds terrible to say, but I guess yeah. uh, trying to help them but again, just like, don't click do. on the emails. Don't answer, don't answer phone calls. If that person is not in your contacts mm -hmm. or you don't recognize that name, just don't even answer it. Don't answer the door unless you're expecting mm -hmm. somebody, you know, those are the kinds of things and, and the conversations I think to try to bring up with, you know, in a casual way, like, Hey, are you having these problems? I keep having these people knock on my door, you know, it, just to try to help start those conversations. Yeah, you call it training, but again, that's how it was when I was growing up. If mom and dad were gone, I wasn't supposed to answer the door. Right. I, I was just taught that. That's how it was. And if I did, I got in trouble. Well, yeah. same thing here. Yeah. Sorry, mom and dad, you're going to get in trouble if you answer that door. It almost seems like, you know, we have like developmental milestones for children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, of course, everybody is different, even from, you know, early, early ages. Like my daughter, most of my family walked at nine months. So I thought it was. Like wow. scary that other children didn't walk at 14 months. It was like, what, mm -hmm. what's wrong with your kid? You know, uh -huh. <laughs> right, right. Just because right. It, normal in my family was super early, and yeah. right. you know, 14 months is not abnormal or anything to worry about. But it right. almost seems like we need somebody, or maybe those of us in this time of life, we almost need like, like reverse developmental milestones. So when mm -hmm. mom and dad sort of get to this point where they need mm -hmm. this kind of help, then we should start implementing these tactics mm -hmm. and you know, mm -hmm. similar. I hope that makes sense. But yeah. Well, and I, yeah, no, absolutely. But I think the challenge is, is that it, we don't know what we, we have no gauge at what age that is. Yeah. And that's what I it's think makes close, it hard. Like nine and 14 months. Not yes, close. exactly. It's like, you've got a, my, my grandmother was writing checks at 98 before she died. You know, we had to pull, you know, credit the, the bank account away from, from my mom at, you know, in her late seventies early. Yeah. yeah late so, 70s. So, mm -hmm. so, you know, that's the tricky part is, but I do think that if we could think of, okay, if these kinds of things are happening, then it's like, okay, it's like, you need a flow chart. If this happens, go here and start doing these things. If you're still in this situation, wait and wait and wait. Okay. Then go here, you know? So I, I think that would be helpful because a lot of times we just don't know when is the right time you know, whether it's taking the, you know, trying to get your parent not to drive anymore or moving into independent living or taking the finances over or those kinds of things. I think that's hard because we just don't. And sometimes it's, it's not a straight line for sure too. Mm -hmm. it makes it tricky. It's also, I think, uh, expectations and tradition. I don't know what the word is I'm looking for, but, but think about, you know, for us, for, for when I talked to my dad about it, companies didn't have 401ks back in the 60s and 70s and you know didn't start really until into the 80s his company didn't have one until like 91 mm -hmm. and nowadays you know that's one of the first things you ask about oh what's your match on the, your 401k yeah on 401k i had to get this 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 is my son's 25 and he talks about his 401k yeah it's just it's just something that's common practice now because mm -hmm. just because we're we're so used to it if we could finally get to a point to where whether it's people our age, or even taking care of your parents to make sure that we all have wills, powers of attorney, even medical directives, it would make things so much easier. Wouldn't wouldn't scare the scammers away. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't fix everything, but it would take so much of the, the crises away mm -hmm. so that you don't have to worry about it nearly as much. But again, it, it's I think so many people think, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to go to an attorney. I'm going to have to spend a lot of money. I don't know an attorney. And they don't realize how relatively easy it is for most of us, yes, if you have a lot of money to where, okay, that, that power of attorney is going to be really intricate and how it's, how it's going to be handled. You have a will where, oh my gosh, you're going to be dividing up your billions of dollars into this and this and this. <laughs> sure, it's going to be tough. But for most of us, it's not that hard. And it would just be so much easier if we kind of got into that common practice of, okay, when we hit this age, we need to get this done. Again, whether it's 70 or 50 or 30, mm -hmm. if it was just common, kind of like, having a 401k is now, if we just got into that practice of, okay, let's get this done and get it taken care of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the stories I tell somewhat frequently is we did our trust, living trust in 20. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it wasn't super expensive and it wasn't difficult except for one question. We only have one daughter and 
when she just got married May 1st, 2022. So it's been not very long. Yeah. And one of the questions that the attorney asked us is, okay, well, obviously all of your assets are going to her. What happens if she dies first? And this was a gentleman mm-hmm. that we were friendly with from our Rotary Club. And I looked at him and I said, that's a really rude question. I mean, <laughs> I was mostly kidding, but it was like, I, yeah, ew, yeah. that's not a question I was expecting to answer. And so we yeah. had to, mm-hmm. you know, Think, yeah, think about, about it, it, which mm-hmm. when I look back, it was kind of stupid because, you know, my son-in-law is the youngest of five mm-hmm. and you get right into your head and you think, well, if the money goes to him, if they're not married and blah, 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 blah and his siblings are blah, 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 and it's like, <laughs> there was one day I came down the stairs. I'm like, the hell with it. I don't care. I'll be dead. <laughs> it's really, really not that big a deal. I'm like, if I yeah. have to come back and haunt him because he did something stupid. Well, we'll just have to work on that. But it's like, <laughs> like really, why do we care? We're going to be gone. Yeah. You know, yes, I would prefer them to do all these perfect things if they have our money, but it won't matter because I won't be here. So we just I really don't. sometimes just, and I'm, I'm really good at overthinking and being mm-hmm. in my head all the time. So that's why I, I like to tell people it, it actually was a fairly pleasant conversation and we had to go a little more in depth because of the Alzheimer's history of my family. You know, there are a few more considerations to take into account with that. Mm -hmm. For the most part, it was no big deal. And it was like, Mm -hmm. Oh, we're done. Mm -hmm. Same thing with, you know, um, my daughter and I, when we pass away, we would like to be turned into trees, which is the thing, you know, nowadays they could have human composting, which is ew. No, thank you. (laughs) Not interested in that one. And so, you know, once you've made that decision and you've discussed it, then it's mm-hmm. like almost like maybe it's just because we have a morbid sense of humors. But, you know, it's like still a tree. Yep. OK. Yeah. You too. OK, great. Oh, okay. dad wants to be shot in space. Yeah. I mean, I think I think there's I think there's peace of mind that comes with that. And as Mike mentioned, then when there is a crisis, you're just focused on the crisis at hand, not do we have all of this paperwork in order? Do we know what's going to happen? Do we know how to help mom get her bills paid while she's in the hospital? You know, all of those things are, you can just focus on those, the crisis, not all the everything. thing that everything else that comes to right. its effect of that. Affected you can by w- that. worry about the earthquake and not all the aftershocks. Uh, good, that's a <laughs> yes. good, good analogy. <laughs> I yeah. live in California. <laughs> yep. Good Definitely. Analogy. Well, that's when my dad ended up in the hospital. You know, my sister and I were focused on him and mom and the dog. Mm-hmm. And again, yeah. hubby was That's- in banking for 20 years and he was like, oh, crap, somebody's going to have to take care of these bills. The thankfully, again, and this is where personal relationships are really important. Another Rotarian friend, because that's how my family rolls all the way around, was my dad's um, financial advisor. And my husband called him and explained what was going on. And mm-hmm. and I'm not entirely certain what happened. I just know the bills stepped started getting paid or kept well, that, getting paid. Well, and from the tech perspective, I mean, that's one of the things that we talk a lot about is, you know, will, is your parent uh, okay with you having access to their email? Because if I can get into mom's email and she were getting any bills coming in that way, I'd at least know the bills were due. Mm-hmm. And then if you are able to have access to their online accounts, do you know their passwords and things like that so that you can get in and pay the utility bill, pay their mortgage, pay whatever else needs to be paid, that alleviates so many hassles. So just, you know, that's all involved with tech because so many, um, and especially as we get older, more and more of our transactions are all going to be online. So if our kids don't know how to access it, that could be just huge headaches Mm -hmm. that can be, that can be avoided potentially if you just know passwords and, and things like that. Yeah. One of the best questions to ask, and this also came from the show me your money episode is, to broach these kind of conversations. Like, I really wish we'd done this with my dad and mentally he was mostly fine. And I only know that it wasn't a hundred percent fine looking backwards, Mm -hmm. but um, the guest from that episode, Cameron Huddleston, who's a financial planner, journalist, go-to person for that kind of stuff. She said, ask your parent, how would I pay your bills if you ended up in the hospital? Because that's a legitimate question that they can answer and they can't really like two step around it with, Mm -hmm. well, you won't have to worry. Right. Yeah, 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 exactly. You won't have to worry about that because, you know, people end up in the hospital for stuff, you know, it it, doesn't have to be just because you're older. Yeah. It's one thing to have a gas bill that's 
forty dollars or a utility bill that's a hundred dollars or something like that. Okay, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, if my dad's in the hospital, if I don't have access to his uh, account, his monthly bill for his independent living is about four thousand dollars. Hard for me to pay that. So if if I don't have access or we've talked about it ahead of time, I mean, what happens then? You know, then talk about a crisis. Mm-hmm. You know, it, dad's in the mm-hmm. hospital. It's a huge crisis, but now you're adding to it so much mm-hmm. because, okay, where do I find this money? What am I going to do? I can't pay it. Oh mm-hmm. my goodness. I'm going to have to move everything out. Where's he going to live? And it could be easily crisis. And you're yeah, spiraling. Yeah, crisis averted if you just talk ahead of time mm-hmm. and communicate and plan ahead. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's why we created that caregiver's key, which was just a place to be able to keep all that information. So that way it's handy. You don't need it every day. Hopefully you don't need it very often at all. But if you do, you already have the documentation. You have their password. You know where they bank, all of those kinds of things, what bills they pay online. It'll make it so much easier. Well, this probably doesn't apply to too many of my listeners, but maybe you never know. Knowledge is always power. Yeah. So how do we help older the old, older population learn some of these tech things because like i said back in 2010 i clicked on a, on a link from wells fargo bank that wasn't from wells fargo bank mm-hmm. and that was a giant nightmare for myself for about a month you know and now i'm you know and we got we got the phone calls from the quote unquote irs collections mm-hmm. department oh, and sure. we had a yeah. we had a payment plan so when my daughter gets this message on the you know we don't have landlines anymore but she mm-hmm. she freaked out She's yeah. like, oh my God, my parents are in trouble. <laughs> yeah, I kept I kept worrying for a while that I really hadn't paid off my student loans that I thought I'd already paid off, you know, 30 years ago because I kept getting these very legitimate sounding phone messages. So we can, we can appreciate the fact that if we're thinking twice and actually looking and contemplating like, is that real? Is it not? Of course, our parents who aren't used to being worried about things, people scamming them. Oh, let me click on that link. That looks nice. So I think part of it is just teach with the technology is first just re- teaching them and reminding them, just don't click on a link mm-hmm. at all. And if I send you a link that's important, I'll let you know, like you always do with your dad. Yeah. Well, I, I think one of the biggest things is what are mom and or dad comfortable with? You know, whether you're talking about your Wi-Fi, their computers or their iPhones, anything, what are they comfortable with? I taught my dad, my dad got, he was an accountant. And I helped set him up on a little spreadsheet. It was called VisiCalc, turned into a program called Lotus, very similar to Excel. But this was back around 1986. I, was, I, I think I vaguely recall those names back from yeah. the yes. old days. Yes, <laughs> yes. No, they're all. I, I taught my I taught my dad. I'm I'm teaching him how to how to you know do stuff on this instead of using like his instead paper ledger. His old, yeah, paper ledger. And I taught him how to you know besides just enter the things. I taught him how to uh, set up a data range, uh, print. Uh, sort, uh, save, and retrieve. Taught him five things on on on, on what Visicalc um, would start later turn into Lotus. This is 1986, and he was young. 19, actually, more like 1984. Oh Lord, that's the year I graduated from high school. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, he was pretty well, young at the yeah. time. Well, how long has that been? You know, almost 50 years. Yep. No, 40. 40 years. He It'll does be this, 40 he, in two yeah. more years. Yeah, he does the exact <laughs> same five things now. And we've tried to get him to and, switch to Excel. And he wants to switch to Excel. He still has an old version <laughs> of, of Lotus. Lotus. But, but, but my point is, is that in all this time, as as computers have changed to black and white to, to color and printers have changed, mm-hmm. yeah, I'll do no stuff. No floppy and, disks. And, and, and he was working up until what, 2009-ish, 10-ish, uh, all this time. So I, I would teach him different things or try to teach him different things, tell him, hey, Dad, you want me to show you how to do a graph? No, no, no. I'm okay. Dad, you want me to show you how I, you can sort things? You want to do a list of, of, of your assets or anything like that? No, I'm okay. I just need to know these five things. He knows those five things. Yeah. Print range, how to print, file, save. That, that, that's all he needs. It, but that's what he's comfortable with. If he wants anything else, guess what he does? He calls me. Right. So I'm going to need some help. And then you might uh, have our son do it. Have our son yeah. help him. So. Yeah, yeah. That's the other thing is that, that with other stuff now, because he... He knows about this much about texting. He knows about this much about his iPhone. His wireless printer. And his wireless printer. (laughs) So if there's a problem, he calls me. Well, our son's 25. So, you know, when he was still at home or even since then, if he happens to be around, it's like, hey, Brandon, you want to help your granddad? So, yeah, hear him. Okay, dad, here's what you need to do. Oh, uh, yeah, he calls him Cubby. But but the the, the funniest thing is that they have a, was it, a dish? Not direct dish, I think it is that has a hopper and a uh, oh, I forgot what the other thing. You, know, you have two TVs, and one of them is like the 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 main hub, and one of them gets 
the the information from it. Right. He'll, he'll, he'll go out and he'll call like at 10 o'clock at night because he's, he's in bed and all of a sudden he can't watch TV. <laughs> and he's like, yeah. And, and I'll hear my son on the phone say, yeah, okay. Yeah. Cubby here. Do this. Yeah. Hold this down. Okay. Mm-hmm. For two seconds. Now release. Yeah. Now do that. And it's like, what? And but the best thing is, is that especially if you teach your, your kids this, mm-hmm. it forms a great relationship between the two. Because my, my dad values his grandson's, just him being around, mm-hmm. the fact that he can help so much. It's not just like, oh, yeah, it's my grandson. I'm proud of him. Mm-hmm. It's like he helps me so much. So because of that, they have a great relationship. And it's great seeing that. Mm-hmm. But but again, the biggest thing is what what are your parents comfortable with? Mm-hmm. Because forcing them into something that they're not comfortable with, it's not going to work. Oh, we, I'm, I'm laughing that when we, he kept talking about wanting, his dad kept talking about wanting to get a new iPhone, wanting to get a new iPhone. And I realized, okay, he has the eight, which has the menu button. Right. And now you have to swipe up. Yeah. And now oh you, yeah. And now you, you just you, swipe you up. You don't have the button down. There. And I said, uh-uh, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. And so we had him before he, I said, Cubby, I don't think you're going to like the new one. And so we had him look, try your sister's. And he looked at it. He said, oh no, I need the button. I said, I, I thought you might. <laughs> so, so again, it's, it's helping he them to, to, sort of, to figure that out. And, I, and then I think it's also figuring out what they're capable of and what they're comfortable with, because there are some that, that some parents that you may just say, you know what, we need just a flip phone that has pictures that they just tap that they can call. Uh, when I got my mom, I gave her my old iPhone when at the time I wanted her to be able to use Lyft because she wasn't driving anymore. And I, I, that was going to, you, you can't just call, you can't call them. There's no other way to do it except through the app. So she was very resistant at first to give up her flip phone, which <laughs> worked just fine for her. But I, I encouraged her. And, and um, but what, what, I, what I did, though, to kind of help make it not so complicated. So I think this is the, some of the things that we don't realize the things that we could potentially do. So what I did is I took off the mail app. I took off the internet app. I took off any apps that I thought <clears throat> she doesn't really have a use for and will only potentially just be confusing. And then any of the ones that are built into the phone that you can't delete, I moved them into a like one little folder that's kind of off to the side. I think I even moved it to the second page. Mm-hmm. So she just doesn't even see it. Yeah. So she can get to her phone. She can get to her solitaire, <laughs> and which is important. Yeah. And it's, she does get some random texts that she sometimes notices and sometimes doesn't. But, but it, I think it's that, setting them up for success. Right. Which I know it sounds funny because you're talking about your parents, but it's right. setting them up for success. <clears throat> Same one thing with my dad. My dad with the computer age, as he's gotten more and more used to it, and as the computers have gotten better and the internet came around uh, in the 90s, he he loves the stock market. So Yahoo Finance, I helped him set up where he has different stocks set up on Yahoo Finance, and I made that his homepage. Well, because of that, he, it's been his homepage for 25 years or something like that. So I'll say something about going to the internet. He says, well... I, I clicked on Yahoo Finance. I said, <laughs> I said, Dad, click on Chrome. I want you to click on Chrome. He said, Chrome? What's Chrome? I, that's Yahoo Finance. Said, okay, the program is called Chrome. It opens to <laughs> Yahoo Finance. I need you to go to Google. What's Google? This is Yahoo oh, good Finance. Lord. It's just he, it's setting him up for success right. for that area. And he's comfortable with that. He can do anything on Yahoo Finance. Mm-hmm. Tell him to get to do anything else, has a little trouble. Right. But set him up for success. Well, I think, too, with technology, years ago, my husband's like, well, I'll always, you know, ad- you know, adapt to the latest and greatest thing. And I knew at the time, I'm like, that is not even going to be the case, Mr. Facebook user. And, you know, doesn't use any of the other social media apps, which makes me bananas, but that's fine. <laughs> but it's like... You know, you you get comfortable with certain things, mm-hmm. and it's like, why do I want to spend the time to learn something new? I mean, you almost have to find a reason for them to want to learn mm-hmm. something new because, <clears throat> you know, why bother if it's, you know, like, I don't have time for this. Why do I need to do this? Well, well and but if you think about it in their life, I mean, really, truly, when you think of it in their lifetime, <clears throat> from not even having television in, you know, television was not even a normal thing to have in your home yeah. to now you can 
in your on your in your phone on in your pocket that you can get on the internet and book airline tickets i mean i mean you know or or everything in between where even though there's tv yeah yeah, exactly what yeah watch movies on your phone so i think that we have to sort of i i I know i get frustrated sometimes with my mom about not keeping up with things but we have to remember because we just even think of just in our lifetime of you know before internet and since internet right and so uh, and how the world has changed. And I think it just, the challenge now is the technology just, it's like it, it, it's, it, it it's multiplies. So fast, yeah. It just goes mm-hmm. so fast that the, the, you know, from going from black and white television to color television, you know, took yeah. some time. Yeah. What are they comfortable with? Right. So just helping them understand that they don't necessarily need to know all of the stuff, but what are the things that they can, that they can do and what are they comfortable with? And whether it's, you know, I'm going to give them a Chromebook because that just gives them access to the internet, but really only very limited amounts potentially, you know, or what, or those kinds of things or a tablet where, but again, remove some of those apps that might be confusing yeah. or not necessary. And, you know, what are the things that you can do to, to kind of help them? And then, you know, Mike has taught his dad, he's like, he, he's like the tech genius at the, his independent living. <laughs> He really here's, is. here's why for this? because he has called me for years since he got his first iphone gosh 10 years right. ago or so and he'll call me and say you know son i'm not able to do this this didn't that work this didn't work in this one dad push these buttons turn it off turn it back on <laughs> oh <laughs> you're a genius that works now he tells everyone in independent living they come to him with their <laughs> iphone problems he tells them turn it off turn it back on they call him a genius around. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. And it's, you know, and it gives him a bit of a purpose, which is oh, yeah. important. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sure you probably, since your iPhone users are aware of the, the, you can have all, blocked calls from anybody that's not in your contact list. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I have to undo that for like, if somebody says, oh, okay, well, I'll call you, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I have sometimes mm-hmm. various mm-hmm. phone calls mm-hmm. from people that I want to speak to, people. but yeah. I, I have to, but they're not on my contact list right, at right. the moment. Mm-hmm. Right. Maybe it's a, a potential sponsor or something. And yeah. I have to remember to turn that off. That's right. right. Well, and so the, that's the thing is like for us to be able to help our parents understanding what the capabilities are of doing things like that. Okay. I can block, you know, do I just block the caller number once they call, but chances are, if it's a scammer, they're just going to call from a, they can, they'll just cloak it from a different number or can I block all their incoming calls? And I've thought about that with my mom too, but then I thought, well, gosh, if the doctor's office call calls from an inside number and she's not always great about checking her voicemail. So yeah, it's trying to figure out, okay, what's the, what's the best case scenario or what's the, the, what's, what's the thing that's going to be most successful in this situation. But yeah, that's, I mean, there's different features like that. And there also is, I don't know about Androids, but there's also a legacy feature in iPhones now Mm -hmm. that allows you to be able to designate somebody that can have permission to access your phone. I think it's only if you, if you you pass away, but then you have to prove the death. You have to too. prove it. So but it's not so, that easy. so it's certainly much easier just to know their their password to their phone. <laughs> That's true. And or like with my with my mom, we just took it off because she we've pulled off internet connection, you know, internet the internet app and all of those. So she really doesn't have anything on her phone except for some contact names and numbers, which you know, and her solitaire. solitaire. So <laughs> if you want to know how she's been doing. Uh, but <laughs> but 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 in that situation Uh, That's just, uh, again, just there's a couple little backup things, but otherwise, if you are, if you don't know their password and you're not their legacy, they will not open that phone for you. So if there's important information in there, then that's going to be just, again, one of those, just many of of the many examples of where things can get so much more complicated and messy if you don't have some of this information ahead of time. Yeah, definitely. Well, this has been super fantastic and fun. And you guys are like racing me down memory lane. <laughs> you guys remember um, TV remote controls that were wired? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like I-, I remember being the remote control because <laughs> I was the one that would just go up and turn the channel, you know? Or, you know, nowadays we actually have to pause TV if we need to use the bathroom or get That's a right. snack or whatever. What, but, a, what a concept, right? You oh, just, I know. Uh-huh. It's, you missed it. I just, like I said, my paternal grandmother lived to 103. So she was born in March of 1918. Wow. And sometimes I think back how much stuff has changed in her lifetime. Now she's gone, obviously, but, you know, in 103 years, that's a lot of change. It's mm-hmm. like, yikes. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, maybe when we're starting to get a little frustrated that the parents aren't taking up technology or falling for scammers, 
you know, just think about how much stuff has changed in their <laughs> lifetime and might give you a little pause and a little a little reality check that will help right. you not yeah. get frustrated be, with them. Add some right. patience. Yes. Maybe some yeah. Patience. Which we all need, which unfortunately is a is a muscle we have to keep building on. <laughs> That's right. That is right. Well, I appreciate this. So this has been a wonderful conversation with Kim and Mike. They are parentingagingparents.com. Did I get that right? Yes, You're exactly you right. Oh yeah. my gosh, I'm doing good on names yeah. today. <laughs> 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 the next guest is going to get just blood butchered, I guarantee <laughs> Yeah, So that, definitely that's... check out their website. They've got tons of great articles and interviews. I'm sure you can learn even more about all of what we've been discussing. And I want to thank you guys again for coming on today. That's right. I was just going to add, if you don't mind, mm -hmm. and when you go to the website, you can click to join our free private Facebook group also. That is a great way to be able to ask some of those questions or when, you go, when you've gone through different experiences, <laughs> being able to share your experiences, but also certainly be able to ask questions. And when you have so many frustrations, you just need to vent. <laughs> That's you can right. yeah. that there. Definitely. Yeah. And the more we talk about this, the more the world is going to catch up to how our population needs to function Mm -hmm. As the majority of it is, well, we're all aging, but the majority of it is getting pretty older. So, yeah. Yeah. again, I appreciate it. Definitely check out their website, their Facebook page. I've done it. You guys are missing out if you're not over there. So, thanks again, you guys. And once again, I will appreciate you guys being here. Thanks Great for having us. Fading Memories is also available wherever you get your favorite podcasts.